morning everybody welcome back hope you've enjoyed the video so far on the 91 shop truck today we're going to do something a little different those rear drums look like crap let's put on some rear disc brakes here's what the rear brakes look like right now here's what they're going to look like i'm going to show you how i did it i'll also list below all the part numbers i used and the parts used in the conversion so if you want to try to replicate this at home you can Okay, before we get started on uh, really doing the rear disc brakes, there's a couple other minor things that have to be done. Uh, although the rear end is not leaking at the moment, from what I can tell, since I have to pull the axles in order to uh, put the brackets on for the disc brakes, uh, if I'm gonna pull the axles, I might as well go ahead and replace the seals. So we're gonna begin by just uh, popping the rear cover. If you've never opened up the rear end of your vehicle, First thing to do is put it on jack stands so it's supported. So I've got the frame supported and then I've got the rear end itself supported. Then loosen the bolts that hold the rear end cover on. They're 13 millimeter. Don't take a couple of them completely off so that you can use a screwdriver if necessary to pop the rear cover from the rear end. Uh, if there's some a seal there, it may be stuck. Pop that loose, which comes off pretty easily. Uh, then the fluid will drain out, and there's not a whole lot of it, but you do want to catch it. After you've popped the cover and you are looking at the rear gear set like this, you want to rotate the rotate this until you get to. Well, actually, that's what we want right there. I want this as a little bolt we need to remove, so that this pin will drop out. We can take the C clips out and remove the rear axles. You'll need an eight millimeter wrench to take this bolt out right here. Then this will slide right out and push it from the opposite side. This pops right out. And with that out of the way, we'll be able to turn this carrier so that you can see the C-clips. You have to push your axles in just a hair As you can see, they bet they pretty much fell out. Let's see if I can use a magnet to get them. There's one. Now the axles will be able to just pull right out of place. It's going to be easier to replace the seal with the brake assembly removed. You don't have to do that, but since we're going to do it anyway, I'm going to take the rear brake uh, backing plate off that's held on with four bolts here and the emergency brake and the brake line going to this wheel cylinder. Remove this whole assembly and taking off this seal will just be a little easier. If you had a leaking seal and had to replace it, you could obviously do it with all this in place, but in our case, it's just going to be a little easier. Okay, at this point, the four bolts are out. They came out easy. I took the brake line from, uh, disconnected the brake line from the wheel cylinder from the back. It's completely free now, with the exception of the emergency brake line. And it's got one of those little clips that has the tongs that pop out. I like to use a board and give it a few hits. That way it distributes the weight evenly. Okay, now we get to the fun part. We're going to start putting the disc brakes set up together and install it on the truck. Let me show you the parts I've got. Okay, here's all the parts I bought. This is a kit that's not really a kit. It's uh, The brackets come in several variations. You can have calipers that have a parking brake or calipers that don't have a parking brake. In the state of Texas, I have to have an emergency brake, so... This is the bracket system for that. Also, I did not order the hardware. In the future, I would say for the extra, I think it's 15 bucks, just get the hardware. It'll make it a little simpler instead of having to make sure I've already got on hand everything I need. Anyway, let's, uh, that's all of it. I wanna see just how inexpensively we can put disc brakes on the truck. And if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, 
over a pre-made kit. I've already bought a kit from Little Shop Manufacturing, worked nicely, but it was also around $600. Let's get started on this and see what we have to do to install it and what the price actually turns out to be. Installation of the bracket was simple enough. Uh, you definitely have to remove the rear axle in order to put the bracket in place. There's no way you're gonna put that bracket on otherwise. However, I used the mounting bolts for my drum brake backing plate to install the uh, caliper bracket. Next step is putting the axle back in. See clips in place. One of the optional rotors to use is the from the Impala SS. If you choose to use this rotor, it'll work great, but the holes, the lug holes are a little small, and you'll need to open them up with a 9/16 drill bit in order to accommodate the 14 millimeter lug nuts that are on your truck. Installing the calipers. Got the calipers installed on the rotor. Uh, put this one with the spring or the emergency brake uh, where it's on the top. Because if you look down here, here's your bleeder. It needs to be high as possible. And the banjo bolt is right here on the bottom, right here, um, for your brake line to attach to. Okay, the rear discs are on. This is the passenger side. And we'll step over to the driver's side. We got it on. And it looks good. Uh, what I need to do now is to work on the brake lines. There's a couple of lines that will go to the calipers. And then I've got the uh, main line that'll come off the hard line from the front of the truck that'll mount to the differential. And then I'll have to go to the store and get some uh, brake lines that already have the fittings that are approximate length and finish that up. Okay, we've got the new hose attached. Comes up and over. And we made a hose. I went to the auto parts store and bought some 3 8 inch brake line hose. And it's 12 inches long and mates up to the rubber hose right there. I just need to come up with a little bracket or something just to kind of support that right there. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, this one's 20 inches long. It'll go on the other side. And I've got a tool. I made a couple of small bins. Looks like this. And works really nice. So now we're going to plumb up the other side. We're definitely getting closer. Everything is attached now except for the emergency brake cables. And I'm going to have to shorten them a little bit and put some cable stops on them. And that should complete that. But the brake hose uh, runs right through here and go to the top using the existing tab on the rear axle assembly to hold the uh, line in place. And just played around with the tool and bent the line a little here and a little there until I got it. Did the same thing on the passenger side. Kind of forms around the differential, goes over to the side. And again, the tab on the rear axle housing holds it in place just like factory. So everything there is ready to go. Now, if we can just get the emergency brake cables shortened and uh, stops put on them, they should be functional and the rear brakes will be done. One thing I did want to point out, I mounted up a wheel to see how it would fit because the uh, rotors typically go on a 96 Impala SS, which came with 16 inch wheels, I believe, or 17. Anyway, uh, when I put the 15 inch wheels on. They did turn, but they also made contact right here a little bit. So I'm going to take a grinder to that and uh, get some clearance there. Shouldn't take much, but uh, a few minutes with the grinder will give us more clearance for those 15 inch wheels, if that's the way we decide to go. Okay, underneath, underneath the truck where the emergency cable runs, this is directly below the driver's seat in the cab here on the frame. There was a bracket here, looked like this. This tab was bent over, went in that hole, bolted right there, and it held 
uh, both emergency brake cables went through this hole to the left, the big hole. Well, that wasn't gonna work. It was kinda angled down lower than this next hole right here, so it was scraping. So I removed that bracket so it would have more of a, a straight line. And then on the front of the leaf spring on the driver's side, if you recall, we didn't tighten this bolt because of this bracket for the emergency brake. Well, as you can see, this bracket only has a hole for one thing, one cable, that's not gonna work. So what I did was took that bracket and was up closer and I enlarged the hole here where my thumb is so that it's the size for the bolt uh, holding leaf spring. Then I drilled an additional hole right here that's a 9 16 uh, and that is big enough for this to go into and those tongs to work. So it will snap in place, at least that's the plan. The larger cable will go in this side and then it will be bolted up here to that bolt from the, uh, the front of that leaf spring. So I'm in the process of taking that out. When I get it all together, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, <clears throat> now that I've got the bracket taken care of, you can see it's bolted in place. I've got both cables uh, going in the holes correctly. Uh, be sure and route these cables correctly to begin with. I had to undo some things and redo them, but there's a bracket uh, right here. It mounts the frame, ran both cables through it. And as you can see, this goes to the caliper there and I put that little cable stop on it and it works just fine. The other one had to do a little extra work. Uh, it comes across here and originally it mounted to the front of the third member right here. Uh, I had to move that because it was no longer uh, gonna work, it was in the way. So I found a piece of scrap steel, and it looks like it belongs actually. Uh, it's about five inches long, an inch wide, it had two holes in it. Uh, I removed the bolt holding uh, the brake line uh, terminal here and put it and sandwiched it in between. And then I attached the breather for the differential on top and there's a similar clip on the bottom that holds the brake cable. So they're both uh, up and out of the way. They don't touch the exhaust, as you can see, and it's out of the way of the suspension over there on the passenger side. And let me go over here and show you that. So it comes out over here. It misses the shock, misses the exhaust, comes down, and again, here's the cable stop there at the end. Now, because these brakes, the uh, actual rotors were meant for a 96 Impala Super Sport. It seems like those cars had uh, 17 or 16 inch wheels, I don't recall, but I may want to run 15s. The calipers were meant for a mid to late 80s Cadillac and they're a lower profile. They had a couple of high spots right here and I ground those down, not a whole lot there to it, just to make sure there's enough clearance. And I checked it with a couple of different types of 15 inch wheels and they do clear. On the emergency brake cable, this is what it looks like, the end of it. And this stop is placed at the end to keep it from going any further, which is great. But now the cable's too long, we need to shorten it. So what I did was I cut off a little bit of the spring at the back, used a pair of uh, vice grips to hold it in place, and I cut this piece off. The reason is I bought some ferrules at my local auto parts store and the largest one, it has the largest screw, but it also has a hole this size, which is not nearly big enough for this to go through. So what I did was I drilled it out with an 11 64th inch drill bit so that it should be big enough for this whole cable to go through now. And it is. So knowing that this size will fit the cable and then you can tighten the screw down and that'll put the clamping force on it so that we can cut off the end of this, probably about three inches worth. But we're getting ready to install it on the right rear brake right now, and I'll let you know how this works out. Okay, here's the ferrule on the cable itself. We cut off a piece of the spring, uh, which is about probably two and a half inches, and it is running through the bracket as it's supposed to, and the internal spring is providing some tension on it. 
and then we got the ferrule right here and it's been tightened so now I'm gonna cut on the outside of this uh, just a millimeter or two outside of that cable maybe just a hair more just to give me a little bit of slack in case I need to uh, reposition it later and here it is trimmed and finished up it's tight it's not gonna let go and the parking brake is ready to use now we're gonna do the driver's side But guys, that about wraps it up for today. We've got the rear suspension lowered. We've got the disc brakes on. We've got the brakes sorted out uh, for the emergency brakes and the calipers uh, and the metal brake lines, emergency brake lines. And uh, we filled the differential with fluid in case uh, I didn't mention it earlier. I wanted to make sure you know I did do that. So I believe the back end of the truck is about ready. There is one more thing that we haven't done and that's the sway bar. So if you like what we've done so far, I appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, because the next video uh, is going to have the rear sway bar, and I think it's something you're going to really like, and uh, you won't want to miss it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.